Right, Beardy, we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 13. We're back in the game with FA Cup legend, I want to call you, Mark Beard. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm all good, Dan. Thank you. Really good, mate. Really good. You're looking well as ever, mate. I took, called you um, uh, Benjamin Beard before. before <laughs> you just look younger, mate, every time I see you. Don't feel, well. mate. I'm training, training every day, mate, trying to keep myself sane, really, in all this um, lockdown. So just been keeping fit, pal. Oh, good, good, mate. You look good as ever. I said, you're always looking well. Right. Your meal career. Now, some people may look at that and go, well, you only played for two years, but you've been at Millwall for as, as, since, since they dot, really, wouldn't you, from a very young age? Yeah, I was there for the age of 14. So I've done two years as a schoolboy, two years as a scholar, uh, and probably two and a half years as a pro. So I was there a good six and a half years. So um, plus living in the area as well, like being around Millwall and the fans all the time, felt like I've been there forever. Yeah, because you, you are a Millwall fan, aren't you? As well, you, yeah. you just fell in love with the club. Yeah, and my dad was a Cockney Red. So, but because we lived in the area, I like if we couldn't go up to Man United, we'd go to Millwall. But when I signed at fourteen, I used to get free tickets and just ended up going every week, home and away. And it was a good time to really follow them as well because it's the year they got promoted to the old. Oh, uh, first division Premier League now top division and we had two fantastic years probably going home and away everywhere of them so um, with some unbelievable players as well you know, like Erlock and Briley and Jimmy Carter Cascarino sharing them so right good time to follow me all that's it mate deal done you were sold there and then you um, you joined at 14 you said was your old man was that anything to do with your old man because obviously well tell, tell your old man was, uh, was a scout for me all wasn't he yeah no he come he I literally, I, he got the job after, really. He, wow. What he did, when I let, got there at 14, I was at a Sheen Centre. They just set it up through Peter Mead, the old chairman. And my dad was doing scouting, a little bit of recruitment f- for them. So, but it wasn't for the main club, it was just for that centre. And then wow. I signed an uh, apprenticeship, then went on pro. Then he'd become head of recruitment with Alan Batsford. So it, it was probably about four years into my stint there that he got a job. So you got him in the door, not the other way around? Yeah. <laughs> Say, oh, he's only there because your dad, but he's the other way around. My dad's only there because of me. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what other players, some very good players, I know, but tell obviously the viewers, players you come through with in that youth system? Yeah, uh, well, in the first year we had Andy Roberts, Tony Dolby, Carl Emerson, Sean Devine. Uh, in the second year we had Ben Thatcher, um, Danny Chapman, Jermaine Wright, Mark Kennedy, uh, Jeff Pitcher, Glenn Knight. We had some great players, mate, really good team. What was it like day to day? Then, like, was it just unbelievable crack? Just, yeah, just all, all the youngsters. You know, the good thing about it is all Millwall fans as well, and um, I still see a lot of them. We still go to the game together, and uh, you've got people like Born and Bred Millwall, like Paul Irving. He still goes. Swerve, yeah, yeah, Swerve. So uh, we like, weren't just good, uh, like those proper men, but those Millwall fans, and it, we'd do anything for each other on and off the pitch. So if it kicked off on the pitch as a team. Uh, we'd be there together it kicked off off of the pitch we'd be there as a team uh, be the same in training we're at a tempo our manager Tom Wally probably the one the, probably the most mental football manager you meet in your life but he's perfect for me or perfect for us perfect for the team we had so I, I do believe in fate and I think that we all come along at that same time and was with that manager and Tom Wally was so successful like got to two FA Youth Cup finals won one lost one we got to an FA Cup semi-final, beat Man United at Old Trafford, uh, the Fergie Babes. We come second in the league one year. We won the Southern Junior Fudlick Cup over two legs at Ivory. Um, and loads of players produced from that team, just from a small part of like South London. So uh, it's just like amazing, amazing team group and like a top manager with us. What was he like? Was he a, nut, was he a nutcase? Oh, mate, man. I just can't. You can't <laughs> unless you meet him. I've played with players later, um, like Ben Smith, who was at Arsenal. And... He, he's just not an Arsenal manager. And they said, fucking hell, he's mental. Like, he only lasted two minutes. And I said, I loved him. He's the best manager I've ever had. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, well, he went to Arsenal after Millwall, Tom Wally. Yeah, because he'd done so well. And everyone could see what players he was producing. And yeah. at, as a player himself, he played for Arsenal and he had to um, retire early. But he won the Youth Cup with Watford. He brought through John Barnes, David James. So he had a great pedigree. So yeah. Arsenal thought, oh, we're taking. But he, he 100% wasn't an Arsenal manager. But he's just <laughs> mad, mate. Like... He, he would beat us up if we didn't do the job right. Didn't he? The boots. And what he'd do? He used to stick Tom us in. Tom Wally's going to be out a few charges after this. I can see it coming. Uh, no, not beat us up, but he used to like stand in the line. So you stand in the line. He goes, "Who didn't clean the boots?" 
and you go, yeah, me, Tom, sorry. Stick your tongue out. You have to stick your tongue out. And he's going to punch you under the chin so you're no, he <laughs> <laughs> Or he grab you in a headlock and you start, like, hitting your head. And, like, but we all respected him. We all loved him. And he was proper funny as well, mate. Like, he just used to run us into the ground. We're trained three, four hours at a time. We was the fittest team. Uh, we run through brick walls for each other. Uh, but he, some funny stories of him, like, he'll go off on a rant half time and he'd say, you ain't playing for the fucking tigers on your shirt. And we all start cracking up laughing. What are you laughing at? Again? And he's going, it's a lion, Tom. It's a lion, not a tiger. Ah, fuck. And then he'd go like, you cockney bastard. Uh, fucking eating your Mayan pash. What's the matter? <laughs> it, so it'd be really funny with it, but he wouldn't know it'd be funny. And his other time, was he, he was off in doing the... that for the, was he off doing that for the crack, or he just completely yeah, lost but... his head and just might mate, just he's just mad, mate. He just didn't know. Like his one time we had a game, Thatcher got smashed, referee didn't give a free kick. And he went, referee, rubbish, referee, rubbish, robbery. <laughs> and everyone was fucking we was on the pitch rolling about on the floor, just like <laughs> laughing at him. Uh, oh my god. Uh, but it might must have worked because Again, a lot of people will watch this today thinking, oh, I might be a score to go at Ivory. And you're very well renowned for that, Emil. But obviously, there was other cut runs, as you just, just brushed on, in the youth team, a very successful youth side. So talk us through, like, the whole... I, I remember, as a kid, you all had shaved heads. My dad said, yeah, the, the manager rang them out. It must have been Tom Wally. Night before, made sure you all stayed in. And I, I, I remember, I think I remember saying you went to Old Trafford, but say I was about 10, 11 at the time, I think. So, yeah, take us through, like, the success you had. The players you had, obviously Mark Kennedy as well. We'll get onto this in a minute. He was actually a forward. I didn't realise that until the other day. Yeah, he was back to the field. Yeah, he came over from Ireland as centre forward, and he broke Teddy Sheringham's record. So that's how good he was. Uh, mm. The reason um, Mick played him left wing is because he just thought physically he wouldn't be strong enough to play against Championship centre forward, uh, centre half at the time. So mm. he just played him on the wing, and then obviously Liverpool, who signed him, hadn't really seen him as a forward. But he scored forty nine goals that youth team season. Uh, but we had an unbelievable team. They had great, again, like I said, team spirit. Um, and we just had a habit of winning. Uh, no one liked playing against us. We were just very basic in terms of 4-4-2. used to work hard uh, and used to just grind out wins every week. And we used to just smash everyone. And before you know it, we're top of league. is us and Tottenham at the time, um, competing for top spot. Uh, the Youth Cup, FA Youth Cup, obviously, we were successful in is that. This, this is the first season, sorry. No, this is the second, first season. We had actually a really good team. Um, but we didn't. We weren't as successful because the year before that, we won the youth cup. I was a schoolboy, um, and we probably had the best team at the time. But for one reason or another, it, 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 we just didn't um, gel as a as a first year and second year group. It was the year after when we had all the success. So as I say, like we got to the final of Southern Junior Floodlit Cup, which is every team from South of Birmingham uh, played Arsenal in a cup final there, and that was unbelievable because Arsenal were a great team. Had some good players. Uh, obviously, the Man United game where we got to the semis and should have won really and Mark Kennedy I, I said it before the other day in another interview if Mark Kennedy would have played I do believe that um, we would have got through to the final because we had a couple of good chances that game which would have killed United off and been free went up an echo before they even got the first goal Yeah, uh, and obviously we like, only lost the league last game of the season to Tottenham so it could have been like nearly a treble for us and which would have been unbelievable wouldn't it so yeah. let's take this, sorry so let's take this back Arsenal you got to the final in one final against Arsenal yep was, uh, that. Was, lost that was a score. No, we won it. Oh, you won it? Yeah, we beat, um, smashed them at the den, I think, like 5 1. And then at the second leg, we was 3 0 down. And then we come back and drew 3 3. So it was a, it was a two legged accurate. Um, so I can't remember, it's like 6 3, 6 4 in the end. Uh, Absolute best. Oh, it was, yeah. I remember the first game, there was, there was a 22 man brawl on the pitch. There's uh, it about four or five thousand there, you know, as well, because it was about a week after United um, second leg at the den. And right. I can't remember, I think one of their players went in late on the keeper. And I think Thatcher's probably chinned the geezer who, who done our keeper. And that was it. And in the end, there was police on the pitch. It was like about 40 people, the bench. I think one of our sub picked up the corner flag and was whacking us. <laughs> it was carded. <laughs> So uh, this is this is the what cups is in sorry against Arsenal? It's the Southern Junior Floodlit Cup. So you, we've done Arsenal over two legs, champions of the Southern Floodlit Cup, yeah. and then obviously in the FA Youth Cup you draw Man United. Yeah, we had a great run. We had some really good games, beat Plymouth eight 0 and then as it got further on, obviously we had a great game against Forest. Uh, drew two two up there, but we beat them in uh, replay at the Den. Um, I always remember that game as well. It was a real good game. They had a good technical team. 
And at half time, it was, I think it was 1 0 up. Brian Clough actually walked into our changing room, pissed as a fart, absolute steaming. <laughs> and Tom's in the middle of his team, and Tom's a nutter anyway. But when Brian Clough walked in, he's like a god at the time. And everyone's like, stops, looked over, and he's saying, Now then, guys, you're a great team. Just keep playing football. And then walked back out. And he's like, What the fuck? He apparently, must have been lagging. Usually, he fucking has a pop of people, doesn't he? We did. Well, yeah, apparently, went on a pitch after that and started doing a lap of honor. All the Wolf fans are clapping him, loving it. So he was off his nut. Fucking hell. So we beat them and then we had the dream tie of United. Um, and at the time, you, you there was no social media or nothing, but you'd heard of the Fergie Bays. Everyone had talked about them, how good they were. So we went up there, no fear, really. And the night before the game, um, one of the boys brought in the Clippers. So said, right, everyone's going to have skinheads. Got to have it done. So And if they didn't have it done, we pinned them down and we'd we done it. So I had a grade four at first, and then Thatcher goes, you're captain, you can't have a fucking grade four. So I went, okay, I'll do it again. So I went back into the room, and he went, zzz, zzz, supposed to have a grade two. And he's gone, like, all the boys are pissing themselves. So I looked in the mirror, he'd done me, and he'd done me grade naught all over. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, right back. Oh, mate, I was so bad. I was gutted. And uh, I was a skinny thing anyway. I was white, it was about March. <laughs> the time of year is March. So it was no, I went to suntan, I was just, I looked like I was ill, mate. So, <laughs> But it was like great experience because we'd done all the managers, the coach. We even done our coach driver. And when he got back, so he did him a grade one all over. He got two weeks suspended from, from the box. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't go up, you can't turn up picking up clients like that. It was intimidating because we was in the tunnel before the game. And we was one where, I don't know, not in a crazy game, really. We'd be winding each other up. We'd be looking and like snarling at them. And then probably Beckham's there, but Neville. Both the Neville brothers, uh, Skulls, they're just looking at us. And you can see Skull like thinking, what the fuck? What are we playing against here? Oh, <laughs> well, these are nutters. And uh, uh, yeah, we beat them 2-1. And it's just unbelievable experience. You beat them 2-1 Old Trafford? Yeah. Beckham, Giggs, fucking... Oh no, Giggs would have been older. Beckham, Skulls, but yeah. the Neville brothers. Yeah. I know, it's unbelievable, isn't it? It's, it's like you said, there's no, there's no social media. Well, it wasn't back then, obviously. So I remember... So I vividly really remember the... Um, the home game, and that you Tom Wally rung you all up, make sure you stayed in. That still gets spoken about a little bit, but this in depth stuff is um, is fucking very interesting. Saying Nottingham Forest and the other cup you was in, and then the league. Yeah. So I was considering, I was considering later down the line trying to do a video like bring back the the youth team from then. So maybe we can maybe going forward sort something out and get a few of the boys on because it'd be great to hear the stories. Because yeah, that's um, that, is, that is some introduction that to youth team football, isn't it? Yeah. Like you couldn't get any better than that. You're in the youth team. You've beat Arsenal in one cup final. Nearly beat Man United in the, in the uh, semi-finals of the FA Youth Cup, and then just lost the league on the last at Spurs. Met Brian Clough, got yeah. complimented from him. It's fucking don't get much better than that, does it? Well, we um, the last game was actually against Tottenham. We had to beat them, so it was unbelievable. Whoever won the, that game won the league, and Stad sold Campbell, but he was in the first team at the time as a centre half. He played the game as a centre forward, scored a hat trick, and that's just unbelievable, mate. Just head and shoulders above anyone on the pitch. And literally won in the league. If he didn't play, I think we would have won the league. And it was on the back of that cup finals, cup semi finals. We was just knackered, I think. And uh, just one game how, many games, how many games in that season? Jesus. Oh, my, mate, my, million. And the fact that how hard we trained as well, like double sessions every day, we was uh, we was on our feet. At the end of that season, we did a trip to Holland as well. And it's probably the best trip I've ever been on. So it's like, so we had, we had the long, hard season anyway. I think we had a week off. And he said, right. Uh, we're going to Holland to this rural place. So we're staying with family. So like be two of us in one house, two of us in the other. Uh, it was just, mate, from the boat there on the way over, it was like a ferry over, but it's an overnight one. I don't know if you've ever seen them. I know. So, it, it goes to like Harwich or something like that, doesn't it? Yeah. So he goes, everyone, everyone in bed tonight. Tournament starts tomorrow. So 10 o'clock, all in our beds. Next thing, I knock on the door. There's only a fucking disco downstairs. And he's going... <laughs> Our bed, within five minutes, all of us are down there. So there's now 20 players getting drunk, drinking. And by the end of the night, one of the boys asked for madness songs. So we're all bouncing and hitting a roof and that. When we come down this in the morning to go get out of thing, mate, you should have seen the roof. The roof where everyone was hitting it, it was all caved. All the captains are standing there saying, what the fuck's happened here? <laughs> <laughs> and that was on the way there. So we got there, went into the houses, uh, first night, trained. We did a little training session as soon as we got there. And he said, home to bed tonight. Again, one of the boys, like, little ring round. 
So oh, did, he just, did he not clock the first? Did he not clock the first night out you've had then? No, didn't clock that. And then uh, we found a bar. So first night getting on the phones, everyone bosh found this bar. And I don't know if you know out in Ireland where we was. No one drove cars, so we all got steaming probably two o'clock in the morning. As we come out, none of us could be asked to walk or get taxis. We nicked everyone's bikes from outside, so we drove the bikes home. This happened four nights on a row, right? Of nicking bikes, and um, when I come back about two weeks later, this uh, one of the blokes I stayed with, he sent me a paper clipping. There was like a crime epidemic all in the papers <laughs> about stolen. <laughs> We used to nick them on front of in bushes every night. So, uh, so I'll be at the club and I love that if I had found that out. But then back then you could get away with a lot more, couldn't you? Yeah, the funniest thing though, like, like we won the tournament, um, pissed it. Um, and then the last night we had a barbecue at uh, my house. Like my mate with the geezer was looking after us. Thatcher was next door and he had these brand new pair of white Paul Smith jeans. So the dog had been out in the garden, like eating food, burying mud and stuff. I don't know what he's doing. Thatcher's knocked on the door. As I've gone to open, his dog's come running through. And as he's in the air, he's trying to protect his like white jeans. So as the dog's jumped up at him, he's sort of like chinned the dog. Right? <laughs> well, I don't know where he chinned him. I sort of like pushed him. But as he's hit him, the dog's <laughs> fallen over. And now he's on his back and he's sort of not moving. <laughs> ben Thatcher chinned the, chin the dog. Well, I've not chinned him, just sort of like jabbed him. And I've, so I've now got this dog and he's on his back and I'm thinking, he's, he killed the fucking dog, mate. So <laughs> garden and not seen it. So I picked the dog up, we took him in the front room and like started not pumping his chest, but like... <laughs> and all of a sudden he just jumped up and went running off and went faint. Fuck, he might have just shocked him. I don't know, I'm a little jab to the head. <laughs> oh my God. I only an absolute fruitcake, well. didn't he, Thatcher? Yeah, no, he's brilliant, mate. He'll do anything for you. Great kid. Um, yeah, but he can be a bit bit mad. Sorry, just going back to that game against Spurs that you lost and Sol Campbell scored an hat-trick as a forward. Sounds like a parallel universe, isn't it? Um, where was that? Where was where was the game? That was at the training ground in New Elton. Oh, well, okay, yeah, Scott, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So, mate, an unbelievable season and then, oh, before we move on to you becoming a pro and a few of the boys, whose boots and that did you clean? The YT jobs? Because obviously, yeah. we've heard some corking stories. Um, I told you, Stephen Reid told one about Ricky Newman and yeah, just, I just love hearing stories on them senior pros. He just fascinates me. Yeah. Uh, who did I have? I had Colin Cooper first year and um, I think I had Alex Ray. I had them too, so it's good. Like, Colin Cooper's absolutely top man. Like, Pl- what a player and all he was. Yeah, leader, proper, proper man. Good player as well. And um, had a great career, didn't he? Uh, and Alex Ray, exactly the same. Loved him a bit, still love him. Um, and great, and real generous people as well. You know what I mean? That, at the time, they give you £50 for Christmas. Which was a lot of money to us. Is over. We was on twenty eight pound a week. <laughs> Jesus, so Jesus. like double our wages. So it was like Christmas when they give us the bonuses. But um, we, the good thing with us there is that unlike Millwall now, and unlike unlike a lot of clubs, the first team in eighteen, we trained in the same place. We did a lot of crossover training with the first team. So that's why it was easier for Mick to be able to know who the players were because we got training a lot. Um, and he could watch his close eye, and he always knew like who he could rely on to go and play in the first team with him. Especially as you're probably doing well, you're doing well, very well as a team. They might have been going, oh, look at these little fuckers, think they're, think they're the bollocks. Wait, they come over here, you get like rattled in training by a few of them and all that. Uh, no, we, we huh? play with no fear. You, you could see, like, me, Ben, Kennedy, whenever we play. Mark made his debut at 17, Thatcher at 17, me at 18. Just play with no fear. It's just a meal away, isn't it? And um, <laughs> always played with heart and courage and, like, no matter how small we were, we'd get fucking stuck in. And Mick McCarthy wouldn't suffer it if you didn't get stuck in. I, it's probably the only club I've been at where... On a Friday, he wanted you to play as you train, uh, train as you play. Sorry, and mm. if you weren't smashing into tackles and f- like rattling people, then like normally, man is saying, no, 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 don't tackle, just get there, stand him up, and like, you had to smash each other, and there'll be fights on a Friday. And we had some hard men, like you're talking about Erlock, Pat Van Der Nau, Gavin Maguire, uh, <laughs> Rhino, uh, just <laughs> unbelievable, proper, proper men who would like probably kill you if, if they wanted to. <laughs> Jesus. So, so you, you, the time come, you turn pro. How many, how many have you got pro? Because that's uh, like some side, wasn't it? Yeah, probably six of us, seven of us. And and me, it, James Connor. I forgot about him. James uh, Connor. I saw yeah. him the other day, actually. He yeah. got his career got cut short by injury, didn't it? It is. It's the maddest injury ever. Uh, it was when they got relegated. It switch stepping yeah. off the coach. You know, like the last step before you step on the pavement. As he stepped down, where his legs were fatigued from the match. His knee jarred, and from that, never played again. Never no way. No, never, no, his knee was so fucked, he never played again. 
What do you do oh, to it? Just like finding it funny. I don't know. Just ACL. Oh, just God. need of reconstruction. Just just from stepping off a coach. Unbelievable. He was a good player. Who else? Who else uh, got pro that year? So there's me, Danny Chapman, Jeff Pitcher, Jermaine Wright. Jermaine Wright. Did he play for Wolves later on, Jermaine Wright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had a good That's career. Right. Which Neville Gordon, he got a pro. Um, who else is there in my group? Uh, that was it, because the year below was then the Ben Thatchers and all that. So Danny uh, Chapman, was he like a long haired little centre midfielder? Yeah, yeah. He, he played a few games as well, yeah. So Yeah. Good side, mate. Very good side. Do you remember um do you remember having a sit down with Big Mick and he said, Well done, you've uh, you've got you've got a pro contract, or did you know that was coming anyway? No, uh, not really. He's proper no. late as well. It's like after the Man United game and he said, we're going to give you a year. It's just the basic money, 150 a week. I think it was a year contract. Um, and his first words were, you'll probably go on loan next year. Um, we've got Kennedy Cunningham. Uh, there's a few other people ahead of Richard Huxford. So we've got a couple of right backs ahead of you. Um, come back pre-season, work my nuts off. Didn't even get in the reserve team at the start of the season. Weren't even on the bench. And I was thinking in my head, I'm going to have to go on loan. And I think it changed. We had a reserve game. I can't remember. It must have been against Palace at Farnborough. And uh, Etienne Vavir, wicked player, unbelievable. He pulled out of a tackle. And mm. as he pulled out the tackle, the ball come to me. And I went and smashed this geezer. And when I got up, I ripped into him. And I said, don't you ever pull out of a tackle again. And I carried on playing. Thought nothing of it. Half time, Mick McCarthy come over to me. And he goes, you would do for me. And he goes, and he's right. If you pull out of a tackle again, I'll fucking do you as well. So... <laughs> A bit of trust in me and I think he thought that he can do it and he could give it to first team players like a player who's come in from abroad and about 24 five years older than me and and they've got me opportunity a month later we had bad run of uh, results there's a few injured um, and he pulled me in on a Thursday morning before the Watford game and said uh, I'm gonna play you Saturday so absolutely buzzing obviously I'm still only 18 and uh, and we won the game 4-1 at Watford as well so it's brilliant oh decent decent you just mentioned him there Etienne Vavia um, we had, how can I say this without insulting anyone? So we had a very successful sort of, um, as you said earlier, the late 80s, early 90s, we were a very successful side. Then after your era, again, very successful to 2000, 2001, your era is remembered very well and rightly so for the very good cup run that we went on. Yeah. But the standard of players weren't as great. I'm not saying you, it, uh, like, there's random players that come in at points. Yeah. And, and my, I, was a, I was obviously just below a teenager or a random teenage year. So, I want, I want to know about these players. And you jog my memory because Etienne Vivier's on the list I've got. And it's not the greatest interviewing technique I've ever had, but I don't <laughs> care because for my own purpose, I just want to know yeah. about these players. So let's start with Vivier. What was he like? He, mate, what a pro. What a player. Like Probably way ahead of himself in terms of the, the group of players we had finished training were up the beehive straight away. <laughs> so he still, if he, six doors in the old yeah, training ground. So I used to walk past five o'clock because apprentices obviously finished late with all the jobs and that, uh, <laughs> clean all the boots. So I was walking home, you just have a look to the left and they're all in there, your rhinos, your pikeys, they're all in there drinking and uh, come on boys, come in. And I was going, no, I've got to get home. So, but Vivir would still be out training late and great discipline. He, the biggest thing with him, he was technically great. He, yeah. he could pass the ball brilliant. He could score goals. And then he got injured. He'd done his knee injury. And I think he had it in the time in the 90s where the surgery, it, it didn't, you never recovered from it properly. Mm -hmm. Not the same player again. And I think English game didn't really suit him after that because he was pulling out of tackles. He was scared of doing his knee again. And he was never quite the same player. But before the injury, I think he could have gone on to be a great, prim, a great top flight player. So it, it, I was going to say to you, do I remember him being as good as I thought he was? That's what, like, in my mind as a teenager, he was unbelievable. But then I look back and I think, we didn't play many games. Then he went to Aberdeen, but obviously that could have been part, like you're saying, the injury. Yeah, it would have you know, been. Just, just like, obviously this this day and age, social media, it's a lot easier to get yourself out there more as a player, as academies, as scout. Back then, like I say, no social media. It was a lot less, a uh, lot less money involved, a lot less scouting involved, especially abroad. And does someone like Etienne Vivier end up? Or you might know the answer, but how does Etienne Vivier end up at Millwall? It's just mad, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think we had a really good scouting system and we, uh, Mick had obviously contacts abroad from when he played in France and through his Ireland contacts. So uh, we got a lot of good Irish players over at any time and Etienne Vivier was one of the good Dutch ones we got. So, I mean, as a coach, we always get sent players and now and again, you do find like a rough diamond, you know what I mean? Like yeah. no one's heard of. So that's obviously what happened with him. Did he get involved like, off the pitch and all that though? Would have never, ever. No, probably a lot of foreign night. Like, you got him, your Casey Kellers. Again, Casey, great person. So now that's my next one on my list, Casey Keller. 
it, it would never go out on a drink with a lad. You know, I mean, it comes to the Christmas parties, but it'd be a token effort, um, and it's probably they're probably more sensible than a lot of us. You know what I mean? And again, he went on to have great careers. But yeah, John Kerr, Bruce Murray, all these types. Mate, of I've got on the list here. You're literally. Not, I've got Casey Keller, Tony Witter, Alistair Edwards, Jason Van Blurk, Damian Webber, Dave Mitchell, Dave Savage. And John yeah. Kerr, that's the numbers I've got there. Like, what were they, as individuals, what were they like? Just, I, just, I don't know why. It fascinates me. Like, let's take, for example, Dave Mitchell. I was watching a Swindon documentary online the other week, and he's got a Scottish accent. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because, exactly. obviously, back in the day, there was no YouTube, no interviews, no nothing. I just assumed he was Australian, which he is. <laughs> he's got a full-blown <laughs> Scottish accent. Yeah, no, Dave was a great guy. Now, listen, they're all good guys. They look like good people. Um, but did they really fit into our culture? I'm not sure. Um, and it, I'm not saying it's a good culture, as I say, like the drinking culture, it, it was good fun, but some like took it to the extremes, you know what I mean? Whereas them boys, they knew when to do it and when not to do it. So that's the good thing about football clubs. You can't have like, if you've got 18 players all the same, then it, it would have been a car crash, but we didn't at any one point. You, you had the sensible ones, you had the lunatics and you could rely on both of them, you know what I mean? To come together when we played in a, 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 in a game. Yeah, well, what about Jason Rambler? What was he like? Great kid, mate. Yeah, another one. Great, great attitude. Um, and kept himself to himself a bit. You know? oh, really? but, yeah, yeah. But good, another great player when he great left foot. Uh, and he had a good meal career, didn't he? Set me up yeah. for the goal as well a few times. Yeah, so we'll go on to that all in good time. <laughs> Teed you up nicely, didn't I? Um, yeah, sorry. Dave Savage. So I'm not I'm just naming these players because I just, you've got the answers I want. You know what they was like. But what was he like, Savage? Apparently, he's a, was he a bit of a nutter? When he'd had a drink, same as Mark Kennedy, like once they, like normal people on the pitch, once they've had a drink, like turn, like for Jekyll and I characters, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. yeah. Mark was mad. He's, uh, and he'd never drunk until he come to, to Mule. So Mule probably um, turned into drink. I don't know. <laughs> <Turned into laughs> what the weird. But Savo was a great lad as well, you know what I mean? Um, it, it's weird. You, you don't get too many bad eggs in football, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I know, John Kerr, like not many people got on with him. I remember Thatcher having a tear up of him in training once. So didn't really get on with them. But um, as I say, you can't have 18 players all being best mates. Oh, go on, I'm going to need more information on that fight, unfortunately. <laughs> Very similar to um, at West Ham one with Arts and um, that Berkovich, I think it was. Same thing sort of happened. Like I think Kerr's coming late on Thatcher on one. And then about ten minutes later, someone's barged, Ben's barged into him, and as he's on the floor, he just like volleyed him in the throat, I think, and he just rolled over a few times. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, right, just, just get, sorry, I've, I took you off that, mate. But um, just, just, just fascinates me all that. Just fascinates me. Yeah, so, that's, I'm reliving that as a teenager now. I've gone back to being a teenager, like fascinated by it all. So your debut was that the season that of the cup run? No, the year before, season, year 93, before. 94. So. Right. It's Did the year have... Herlock come back. Remember Herlock come back? It was that year. Yeah. So, Did uh, you quickly establish yourself as a first team regular after your debut? I played probably four or five in a row. Then he took me out for a bit. And then I come back and had a really good run. I played against Bristol City and scored the equaliser. Two, um, two away. I remember that. Yeah. Like, unbelievable game. And I went on a real good run of games. I think I played five or six in a row where I've got a couple of man of matches. I've got a new contract. So I was having a right um, good spell. And I remember one of the contracts, he, he's after Tramiel, one man a match. And I just remember playing so well, just buzzing. And he called me in and goes, um, I'm going to give you a new contract, two years, uh, take you from 150 up to 275. And I went, yeah, I'll sign it. I signed it straight away. I walked out and it was done in literally 30 seconds. Uh, he called me in on a Monday again. He said, I've never had a player in my life just sign it there and then. He goes, you got no age? I went, no. And he said, you didn't want to go speak there, though. No, I just want to play for Mule. And he's going, right, put your money up to 350 and give you extra appearance money. So he ripped that contract and gave me a new one just for the fact that um, uh, he just said there's no hustle, no fuss, and all I want to do is play for Mule. I didn't give a fuck about the money. It was just about, uh, I was just enjoying playing in front of um, my like my team and my fan, family and friends, you know what I mean? So, you said that, you said that genuinely meaning it. You probably haven't even realised that that's exactly what he wants to fucking hear, and that's why he's giving you another contract, you know what I mean? <laughs> I was just buzzing because I was at, at the time the man of match award used to be a bottle of Captain Morgan's rum. So I was looking for the kitchen. Yeah, I was going to give that to my old man. And we used to get these, fuck, I don't know, a fruit bowl, big glass fruit bowl. We're like this. And I had one of them in my hand and a rum in my hand. I just wanted to get out of there and fucking give the bars to my mum and a bottle of rum to my dad. <laughs> what was he like, Big Mick, as a manager for you? Yeah, I loved him. 
Yeah, he's good. I mean, I know some Millwall fans are 50-50 of him because I think the way it ended, That's and I think when he got the island job, he should have just walked. Mm. Uh, and that's probably the worst thing that happened to him because he obviously had his mind on other things and he took his um, eye off what his job should have been and he got relegated. But as a mate, as a person, he's unbelievable. And he's just a winner. He's just a winner. And again, I... If he didn't take the island job, I think he would have done had a right good Mill career, and uh, Mill fans would have loved him. But um, it's just a shame the way it ended. Yeah, like you're right. So it is a shame the way it ended. And looking back, other than the year we got relegated, you no, know, we came close a couple of times, didn't we? Could he, did he often did he lose his shit in the dressing room? I can imagine it. Yeah, it could be like and you, like it it wouldn't be for no reason. So if he did, it would be for a reason. And I think most of the players weren't scared of him, but you'd be like. If he said it, he'd take it on board. Probably the only one who didn't really take it was Pat Van Den Uh he just, he'd just fuck off. He'd just walk away or walk off the training pitch. He just, he just didn't care, mate. He was a loose yeah. cannon as well, though, wasn't he? Oh, mate. He's, I mean, he just could switch like that. And then again, the nicest person, quite quiet, even though his personal life was just constantly in the news of the world with... Um, just... Mandy Smith. Yeah, I'm just, I just coming to my head. And he was, well, why was he in... What was she then? Because, yeah, his personal life, he's always split up his missus. He's always in the front page of the sun, wasn't it? Well, Mandy Smith was known, but she was married to one of the Rolling Stones, wasn't she? That was right, yeah. So he had an affair with her, and then she ended up going with him. So, and it was that one Sunday in the News of the World when he was in her dress, wasn't it? So the next day, we've come in training. Here's a picture. Google it. Pat Van Den and Mandy Smith's dress, and the high heels and that, and makeup. So he's had to come in training next day. <laughs> Ian Evans, assistant manager, had had a mannequin put in with Pat's head on and like his red dress. He walked in the door, walked straight back out. Didn't see him for three days. Oh, shut up. He didn't wait. He, he, no, he didn't he, take it. He didn't take it. He got to wear it. I was going to say, not like, excuse the yeah. pun. I didn't mean to say it like that. Yeah. Oh, he was fuming, stalled out. Fuming, mate. Yeah. And there was a game, played Bristol City. Someone smashed him. He's on the floor. I went over. You all right, mate? He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Galvin, man. And the guy goes, get up, you tart. And he just went, Grabbed the gaze around the throat and his eyes just went. And they're like, oh my God. And he goes, I'll fucking rip your head off and I'll kill you. And then straight away, I like this geezer's mad. And there we was out once. And he'd always have this geezer with him. Never knew he was. He's six foot five. Mate, the biggest geezer you see. So if we go in, we'd be in a bar. He's in, um, I tell you when it was, it's Christmas. It was our Christmas work, uh, work players do. And we're in there. And uh, we, it's funny. I was walking up from the toilet with Thatcher. And Dennis Wise is walking down and he had this black shirt on and his white collar. So he looked like a vicar. As, he, as he's walking down the stairs, I oh, just went, fuck me, he looked like a vicar snatch. And um, he grabbed me arm, Wise, and he said, boys, boys, we're all London lads around here. You know, talk like that would get you in trouble. One more word and we'll be fucking having it. And I, went, <laughs> I went up and told Pat, next thing, Pat's um, told his big six foot five bouncer geezer. And then it was, he's gone over to Wisey and to a Frank, I think it's Frank Sinclair was there. And he's grabbed them. You just see him having a quiet word. Next thing, all the Chelsea boys are gone. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I don't... Bad, bad. To that day, I don't know what he said. But it, what's the most surreal thing is, right, about two hours later, and it was, we was in Common Garden and one of them corner pubs. And the next thing, Pat's come over and goes, boys, you got to go. I went, why? He's going, we've had good word. ICF are outside and they're going to kick off. And we went, what? <laughs> he's going, West Ham are outside. So I went, oh, OK. And he goes... Me and whatever his name is, we're tooled up and we're ready to go. I went, you fucking for real, Pat? He's going, leave, <laughs> leave it with us. You go. So then I said to Ryan and Alex, said, come on, let's go. I'm fucking hanging about to get be in a fight with West Ham with tools and that. We, we just went out. So yeah, he's, 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 again, he's, the rest of the night. That was it. Just him gone. Is he going to take him on? We'll just double handed him and his mate. Nah, his mate would probably take 10 people on his own anyway. He's an absolute unit. But it's just like weird stories like that. He's just, just mental, mate. <laughs> He's a crazy geezer. <laughs> We're tooled up. He, yeah. You just mentioned him there as well. Um, Ian Evans. Yeah, he's class, mate. Great, like, great. Because Mick was the, obviously the strict one and Taff would be the arm around you, you know what I mean? And, like, I remember we played Stoke away and I made a mistake that they went through and scored. Uh, and he, Mick ripped my head off and then Taff would come over, give you a cuddle around the arm and then you play the half, sec you play second half really well, you know what I mean? But yeah. um, he's good cop, bad cop sort of thing. And that's what you need anyway, didn't you? So he was brilliant. Yeah. So you, you're in the first team, you've had a good first season, an eventful one by the sound of it as well. Um, Mark Kennedy is, so you and you and Thatcher, obviously local-ish boys. I don't know where Thatcher lives, but you know what I mean? So probably still living at home. At, where did Mark Kennedy, how did he, how did he take to London life? You said he was quite a yeah. quiet character, then where did he stay? 
Yeah, uh, anyone from Ireland stayed in Diggs, so we stayed in Diggs like literally a minute from the training ground. Um, oh. Thatcher lived with Paul Irvine, so he lived literally around a corner from the training ground in New Elton. So everyone was really local, mate. So it was Kennedy fitted in perfectly again, like just a great lad, loved banter. Um, and yeah, he's just not only was he a great player, he's just a great lad who'd do anything for you as well. So again, another one who. You talk about characters make changing rooms, and he was just another great character. And I think that's why we had such a good, like, um, probably five, six years of youth teams coming through. Because then after us, obviously, you had your Bertrams, your Stephen Reeds. Um, yeah. It's just a continuation of that policy that Alan Batsford brought in and Tom Wally. How good is that? Because obviously, like, sometimes a youth team player will come through and he might feel a little bit. The transition was probably easier for you and the other two because you, the three, just sort of went in together and sort of stayed in, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a bit of course. And. As I say, being Millwall people, you we going home and away every week, you know what it takes to be a Millwall player. You know what you got to do. And if you don't do it, I'd be one of them fans two years before, like screaming and shouting at a player for not doing it. You know what I mean? So yeah. you, you know what you got to do and you give nothing less than 100% every time. So that, that worked really well as well. So that was the 93-94 season, that was, wasn't it? Yeah, we got to the playoffs and lost to Derby. Pat Van der Laals fucking put one past Keller, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Own yeah. goal. Wasn't he, did he not one past Kelly? He did, didn't he? Yeah, that was that season, mate. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's, did, did you play in the playoff games? No, I was. I wasn't even on the bench. No, I think towards the end of the season, he just went with experience. Mm. I don't think none of the youngsters played. So he just went with experience. And we had the few injuries that year. They all come back. You know what I mean? I think Kenny Cunningham was right back at the time, who was an unbelievable player. So, um, yeah, I weren't in at that time. Yeah, he was a very, it's a tough one to be behind, isn't it, Kenny Cunningham? Because he yeah, he went on to have a great career. He's a great player. Did you, did you learn a lot of him? Yeah, brilliant. The great, one of the best pros I've ever met. So, yeah. again, didn't drink, just trained hard every day, always in the gym with us after. Uh, just like a real good character. And the um, good thing for me, he could play centre half. So, a lot of the times there was injuries, he would play centre half and I'll play right back. So, that's why I was able to get so many games. Mm. Is that the season? Did he lead that season? Him and John Goodman went to Wimbledon, didn't they? Yeah, because he. Yeah, the year we had the cut run, he weren't there. All good, man. No. Yeah. So the the year we had the cut run. Sorry, mate. I said, I said to you, I, I want to ask a lot of questions, but it could be a long one. We thought we didn't see him. We hadn't even got onto the cut run yet. Um, the ninety four ninety five season. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Did we um was championships? We did. We didn't have to play in round one or two, did we? Went straight in at three. Arsenal was the first game. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So we draw Arsenal at home. That's the dream, isn't it? Surely. Was you, in, was you in the team at that point? Was you thinking, fuck me, if I'm not, I've got to go back in the team because I'm desperate to play against Arsenal? Yeah, no, we, I think it was um, Boxing Day, I got knocked out. Uh, I got concussion. So I missed two games. I missed New Year's Day against Cholton and one other. And um, so I weren't even in the squad for the Arsenal game because I wasn't allowed to play. Then they, so we drew 0 0. There's a game on a Tuesday which they lost, and then we played Sheffield United on a Saturday, and Mick said, I'm going to play your right wing, Sheffield United. Chance to get in, because Arsenal's on a Tuesday, so play well, uh, you play Tuesday. So, for me, as soon as he said that, I was I was only going to have a good game that day, and I scored after 10 minutes, one man a match, and sort of like got my place for the game on uh, Arsenal at Ivory. So, uh, missing the first game, which was a nil-nil and a boring game, uh, to go into this game, and uh, being double up for it, and confident, and Go there with no fear, and uh, we so many Millwall fans as well. And I think we sold six thousand everywhere. So uh, mm-hmm. just an unbelievable game, and day. Um, what, was, what was the belief going into the build-up of the replay? Obviously, for those who might, youngsters that might be watching this, we drew the first thing at home. Sorry, the first the game at home, and then went to a replay. It was unlucky not to win that day. I think Dave Mitchell came close. Seaman saved one. Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, we went to Highbury. Was there was there a belief there that we could maybe? Yeah, I think what how we did it was it was to be nice and compact, work hard, not given time on the ball, which we did. And if we could nick a goal within the first, first 20 minutes, then you give yourself a chance, you know what I mean? And we did that. We scored after 11. And, yeah, uh, we got it. I can't remember who got that one. I remember, mate. I have to have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Jason yeah. Van Blurk goes down the left. Uh, again, going back to my, my old, I mean, it's, they're my own personal memories as well. Sorry for people who only want to hear your story, but just jog so many, many memories. My old man used to slaughter Jason Van Blur. He's fucking useless. And I, I think Mick McCarthy put a, a pre match notes once and said, Jason Van Blur likes to put his foot on the ball. My old man was like, What fucking winger? You want to wing it to get out of me? Don't want to wing it to put his foot on the ball. Jason Van Blur's gone down the wing, didn't put his foot on the ball. He, did he shank the cross? I think he did. 
No, uh, what happened was as he's cut, he's played a one-two, and rather than going the outside, he's run inside. Yeah. So his swing, his swing has turned around to look that way, and he's gone inside. So then he's then cut it outside. So he's now facing away from me, and he's so the only cross he could do is what he did, like with any quality. So he sort of like bent it round. So is it, that's the best cross to have because the defenders are running facing their own goal. That's where you can score an own goal. And as they're doing it, they're now not looking at me. So Winterburn's marking me. He ain't got a clue where I am. So he's looking at the ball. So all I did was make a little run around the back of him, gambling that Van Blurt's crossing the go there. And, <laughs> and suds like it did. And um, I didn't really have to slide as well. I don't know if you noticed. I slide to score. Now, yeah. reached, I slid. I wasn't that confident that if I stood up and just side fed it in, I could have shanked it and fucking 10 foot over the bar. So if I looked like I was sliding into score, yeah. and bobbled over my foot or something, I could have gone, oh, I just slid in, but I actually slid in, got good contact in it and, it, and it went in. What happens in that moment when it's coming? Do you think, fuck, is that is actually going to happen here? Like, did, it, did your, your life go before you or is it just over before you realised? It, it's quick, it's fast, obviously, and then I've made the run, and then I'm thinking, Fuck, I'm in a position where, where it could be like uh, the best moment of my life, or it, I could be fucking battered by 6,000 Millwall fans behind me. And like I say, I just made sure I got good contact on it. And once I knew I got that good contact, it was only going in, or Seaman could have saved it. But I think I did get quite good pace on it to get in, even though it's only from six yards, you still needed good contact. Uh, yeah. And at the moment it went in, fucking hell, he just, first thing you look at is, was it offside? But then the, the flag went up, and then just everyone's jumping on me. And all I could see, because they were like 80 yards from the middle fans, is obviously... Yeah, you see, behind clocking, you see arms and legs and things going everywhere. Uh, ben Thatcher weren't playing that game. He had tonsillitis, and he used to call me Chicken. Chicken Bud Bud. So all you can hear was him going, Chicken Bud Bud, love it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember when it cuts to... Um, just before we scored a second goal and highlights, it cuts and Thatcher's on the bench there. I wonder why he didn't play. Yeah, but, um, awesome. So we beat them at Ivory without, without um, Ben Thatcher. I mean, and for people who might think... Again, younger people, they were phenomenal, Arsenal. Renowned for not conceding goals, weren't they? Yeah, I can see. That back four was just renowned for um, the best defence. Like, 1-0 to the Arsenal was still a song they sing now, isn't it? Because they used to beat everyone 1-0 and yeah. one could score. So, to score against them. And then, that was the game plan, really. Got the, game, got the goal. Now, it was to see if we could sort of hold on. But I had another chance with my left foot. Should have scored. Should have been 2-0. Could have buried them. Then, Ian Wright had a good couple of chances. Kevin Campbell had a great chance. Tony Adams had probably the easiest chance of his life and shanked it. Um, and then Mark Kennedy hit him on account in the last minute and won it for us. So, you know. Um, well, he's still smiling. It's unbelievable. We're both sitting here smiling. Because yeah. I remember as a teenager thinking, this can't actually be happening. Like, it just cannot be happening. We're beating Arsenal. Because yeah. um, Arsenal say we're a bigger club then than they probably are now. Would you say? I would yeah. say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's a massive club, isn't it? But, um, mate, unbelievable. What, what, what was um, celebrations like after the game? Me, personally, just like... Um, put so much effort into it uh, and I always remember after the game not a lot of the boys celebrate they went and clapped the fans me and Mark Kennedy because we scored was obviously press on the pitch taking photos and I just want to start it forever you want to cherish your moment so we we stood out I, you're still on the match of the day thing, um, clips now when you look we're there for ages and that fan comes on and wants our shirts but back then we weren't allowed to give shirts away so we celebrate with the fans for a little bit and then we run in Boys took it as just another win, you know what I mean? There was no big celebrations. They was all probably going to the Gym Palace Ladies Night that night, but I just went <laughs> home. <laughs> I just went home, mate, and I was fucked. And I just remember the next day I was going to my girlfriend. She lived in Putney, and I lived in Collier's Wood at the time. Uh, just getting on a... I weren't driving. I was only 19 or whatever. I got a tube from Collier's Wood to London Bridge and then um, over to Putney anyway. Every person that was on that paper that morning, um, read on the train, were reading papers, and I was on the back page and front page of every paper. And it's just sur surreal, you know what I mean? So, obviously, it never happened to me, and it's such a big game. And um, and I think the good thing was, it was a replay, I don't think there's many other games that night. So, it was just I, either pictures of me on the back page or Ian Wright having a fight with Alex Ray. Uh, but then all of a sudden, people coming up to me. Like saying, like especially young kids, hey, you, you know, can you play for me all last night? And I was going, yeah, mate, yeah. <laughs> That's good. What was that so, you said about that? But a fight, by the way, um, Alex Ray and um, Ian Wright. Ian Wright used to get dogs abuse off Mill fans, but then a couple of years ago when we played Watford in the cup, he was on on a commentary team with Yama Mill fan. Now, now everyone loves him, didn't they? But yeah. he used to get some serious abuse, didn't they? Him and Alex Ray had a little bit of a ding dong that night, didn't they? Yeah, they uh, and it carried on it, it, like they've 
like rattled him in the game, but it's actually Andy Roberts, Pikey, smashed him right on the final whistle. And Ian Wright went for afters, Alex Ray's grabbed him, went on into the tunnel, and Wright kicks out, do you, I'll wait for you, I'll wait for you, and went into the players' lounge, and um, Alex was actually with his wife, having a beer, next thing he's come over again, grabbed him, wanting to fight him in the players' lounge, everyone's like to stop him and pull him apart, and oh, just God. nutter, mate, and he, just a winner, really, but I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. he's forgotten about it, you know, he shouldn't carry it on, but he, um, yeah, I think he had the ultimate out. And then, sorry, yeah, getting back to the next day, the, the jubilation you felt. That's that's what was one of my questions. Like, did what, what was the, did you notice the change straight away? Like the next day, the difference. Like, did you wake up thinking, has that actually fucking happened? Yeah, um, I think like it was back in the VHS day. So I went down, um, watched the game back, watched what um, the actual Gary Lineker was on with Des Lynham that night, and he was one of the um, commentators, and they spoke about it. And so I watched that back, watched my interview, which was painful, um, and then. <laughs> Like I say, yeah, just and but then you back chain next day, preparing for the next game. So and then we had Chelsea, I think the week after. So no time to celebrate really. Just had to think about the next game on the Saturday and then the Chelsea game the week after, which we knew was going to be like unbelievable. Yeah, mate, like, you seem to took it all in your stride really well. But you like youth career and then you, you, you're going to your first team career and it's almost emulating your youth team career. And you must have been like, this is like, did you did you ever think like later on in your career like? Fuck me, I didn't realise how good things were at that point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you, you only appreciate it more as you get older. And mm. I try to get that message across to all my kids now, the youth team players, that uh, your career goes so quick. Before you know it, you're finished. Um, you're, and all you've got is memories. So create as many memories as you can mm. in this short space of time. And my six years at Mirror I've got nothing but great memories. And even when I go back and do the Dockers Day or talks with Jimmy Carter uh, in, and Brian Orn up in the executive lounge, just go there with a smile on your face. One, you see the same people year after year, like even when I was playing there, and just, just they always, always remember you. You know what I mean? And I don't think there's many clubs like it. No, definitely, mate. Like to say, you do you think as well? It sounds. I mean, it sounds. It is the case, and especially now, like with Ben Thompson playing. Do you think you just gives you that extra ten percent? I know you give everything anyway, and that's what the fans loved you for, whatever club you played at. But do you think? subconsciously just being the Millwall fan just gives you that playing for the club you support just gives you that little extra bit yeah definitely of course it does mate and yeah. uh, I don't care what anyone says it does uh, and like I say I went and played Sheffield United South and Steve and his Wimbledon after that and you always give 100% but when it's your own club it's, there's nothing like it look at Stevie Gerrard like only played for Liverpool in England didn't he and um, uh, he, he couldn't play for no one else could he the way he did no no brilliant mate so round three FA Cup, we beat Premier League Arsenal, draw 0 0 first game, beat him at Ivory. Then we draw. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we, when fans say about the, the balls, it's all fixed these days. Imagine these draws in this day and age getting them again. So we get Chelsea at home on January the 28th, 1995. I know because it's my 15th birthday. How oh, is it? And uh, I sat in the um, cold blow up at that day with three of my schoolmates. Oh. Yeah, you, you played that day? That was chaos. Yeah, that was yeah. absolute chaos. I, I, I always remember as well, like, Whenever you're playing, you get people asking me tickets. And my brother-in-law, Julian, always pals the Chelsea and asked if I could get them tickets. The only tickets I could get were comps I could get. So, obviously, giving tickets, not even thinking they're fucking Chelsea. Like halfway through the game, I just remember, like, massive, oh. ah, and looking up where the seats and all my family are, I could just see fucking people flying over chairs. I go, oh, no, I hope that's not my lot. It wasn't, but there was just Chelsea everywhere. And, my, you know, the most memorable part of that game was the let them come before the game. I think it could be the only time in the Dens history where they had all four tiers, like mm. full, and they, they never did it again after this game. And uh, the let them come before the game. And I always just sing it in my head, like running around in a Walmart, like a few sprints, get myself going. And I just remember that day just being like the loudest I'd ever hear, I'd ever heard. It was just unbelievable. Goosebumps, like thinking about it now. And then going out and playing. And then the game, they won a lot of, chances is real cagey um and I, all i remember is like three minutes to go and uh i had a throw in the corner there's horses everywhere on the outside so i'm taking a throw and there's a whole fucking two yards from me and then <laughs> from the boys come back to me and then they started fighting so now i'm fighting there's horses there like half kicking out and there's a mill fan there fucking chin mint oh beardy chin him and i'm talking <laughs> 
And we got another throw. So now I'm a yard for this all. There's people fighting. There's Chelsea fans 10 yards ahead. Mill fans snarling. I'm coming in and out. All this. And I'm like, oh, no. So oh, I said, how long? He's going a minute. I said, just fucking blow the whistle now. No, no, no. I'm not allowed. I'm going to get trouble with that horse. Just fucking blow the whistle. And I think he did blow early. And then we all just like run him. Um, but the, the second game, throughout my career, I never played an atmosphere like it. It's just like surreal. Just I can't even describe in words. And until... People talk about the Millwall West Ham derbies. I just I can't remember a noise like the Millwall Chelsea game at Stamford Bridge. Um, it was just like, it was just frightening. One I remember to this day. Yeah, I'm a, again, my old man wouldn't let me go. He said, "No, you can't go that one." And I listened to it on Capital Gold. So um, we start the game again. Chelsea for those youngster people, younger people watching, maybe not as good as they are now in that day, but they were still a very good Premiership side, didn't they? Glenn Oddle was a manager, wasn't he? So uh, yeah. Good- Mate, some real good players and yeah. top internationals and um, we was the underdogs again. Must have been full of belief though, now. Yeah, I think after beating Arsenal and drawing 0-0 uh, um, at home, uh, the pressure's off us. Mm. So since the Ivory game, we go there, we know we're going to work hard, we know we've got 6,000 real fans behind us and we know we could like upset them. Um, difference in this game was we went 1-0 down about 70 minutes and it looked like they could go on and go on and nick it but we kept going and kept going. And to be fair, I had a great chance again. I think uh, Thatcher crossed it in his time. I did the same run as before. I shot. I think it's hit Kareem's come back to Savo and Savo scored. And um, mm. again, just like amazing feeling. And when, when it took extra, extra time, we knew that we could get them. You know what I mean? Again, I nearly scored right at the end. I bent one in. Um, but I just remember there's a corner, like two minutes to go. And I've run over to take it. And it's by the Millwall fans. And just like, you know, when they're all standing up and clapping, it's just like a moment you never forget. And mm. it's, you know, oh, this is brilliant. And I'm wondering, like, come on, come on. <laughs> I turn around to take it. One of the boys is injured. So now I stand there for three minutes. I ended up just like talking to him. Like, <laughs> I was a corner player. I'm trying to wind him up. Come on, I can see it through the last couple of minutes. And then, um, anyway, end up a draw. Mick said, who wants some penalties? I can't remember practicing. You know, like we, we practice with our teams all the time now. I'd like to make sure. I don't remember mm. ever taking a penalty with us in training. So we got our first five takers. And, and he never even went for six, seven, eight, nine. So, he scored, didn't he? But Rhino scored the best goal. Top, like, top bin. Alex Ray, Andy Roberts. Savage. Uh, Davo. Um, I can't remember who else. So, we went, it went, we was one, nil up, to one, one, two, one, four, one. And as the penalties are going, I'm thinking, fucking hell, this could go into sudden death. So, John Spencer's walking up, and now we've got to start thinking, because Mix in the dugout. So it's just us boys to decide he's going to go next. So you got out of Casey, me, Ben Thatcher, Tony Witter. Tony Witter's now got his fucking boots off, so he ain't taking a penalty. <laughs> and there was one other, I can't remember to this day who it was, but they didn't have their boots on either. So I said to Thatcher, are you taking a penalty? He goes, fuck off, I ain't taking it, you're taking it. He goes, I ain't taking it. He's going, you're taking it. But Casey can't oh, take it. God. So we're arguing now. And he said, you're fucking taking it, chicken. And I was going, oh no. <laughs> I'm, mate, I've never been so nervous and I've not, I didn't, couldn't even watch the penalty. So I'm like shaking. I'm thinking, fucking hell, I'm going to be next. I've got to walk up to Chelsea and take a penalty and I'm, my legs ain't even fucking working. So <laughs> I turn around and watch the Millwall fans. So I'm now facing that way, watching Millwall just saying, please jump up and down, please jump up and down. I hear the whistle. Shh. And all of a sudden you just see Millwall go, yeah. I've run that way to all the Millwall fans. Oh, I'm fucking sprinting, the happiest man in the world. My legs are working again. <laughs> <laughs> Mill fans, all the rest of the boys run that way to Casey and probably the worst thing they did because they went all the Chelsea fans invaded the pitch didn't they and uh, all got they, a few clump yeah it's getting clumped over the gaff but the funniest one again was Thatcher like Mitchell's got one he's gone down Casey Keller's got one he's fell down Thatcher's got one he's from the side of the head Thatcher's turned around you and now he's chasing this geezer for all the fans <laughs> geezer's jumped over the advertising boards and up the stand so uh, oh, we all got back God. together in a change room anyway, and that, like we celebrated more that night. That was it was unbelievable. And um, funny thing was, we after the game we couldn't go home straight away. So Chelsea fans bricked our coach. Um, so I rung my dad. We was in the players' bar, started having a few beers. All the Chelsea players are there. Uh, we was in there till about two o'clock because that coach got bricked. The game didn't finish till quarter past eleven anyway because of yeah. fucking like, extra time penalties, all the palaver after. <laughs> And then second coach come in, that got bricked. So then we had the third coach. So we was there. We didn't get into half two in the morning, but 
Um, it's, so he was able to have a good drink after that game and proper celebrations. <laughs> My nipples have gone hard to listen to your story. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, honestly, like, football, football ain't as good anymore, is it? It ain't as good as it was then, is it? No, and uh, like all the Chelsea players of us, like, um, I said to someone the other day, what, what they said, what was Dennis Wise like? He'll wind you up and we'll be at throw in and it's their throw and he's going, I'll bet you £10, I'll beat you to this. And he'll spin to run down the line and I'll chest it and play. And he come over, he goes ten pounds, and then he goes do it again, and won it again. At the end of the game, come up to me, here's twenty pounds. I went, no, I don't want it. No, fucking twenty pounds. Buy me a beer with it. So you just like people like that, proper like. Oh, generous, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's probably still uh, shit scared of Pat Van Den six foot five bouncer from fucking a couple of years from <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brilliant. Oh mate, this is fucking a brilliant insights, especially for like, I say the younger, for people who was alive, but even more so for the people who maybe wasn't. It's um. Great times. And when I say football isn't as good, the standard is obviously better these days. Yeah, yeah. And a lot more goes into it. It's a lot more business orientated, but you wouldn't get the stories. You ain't going to get these stories of Raheem Sterling in fucking 20 years' time. They won't exist. Do you know what I mean? It was so good back then, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. It's it was iconic. Just, you know I mean? It's brilliant. We had good characters. And like I say, for me, as uh, 18, 19, 20, I'm playing with heroes as well. Like, I watched Alex Ray. Terry Herlock. I remember Herlock when he come back. I can't remember where he come back from, but he come back anyway. And he played in a Palace game, um, in a reserve game. And I just like shaking the fact that I'm playing with my hero. And like within the first minute, I wanted to impress him, so I just absolutely upended this winger, George Nadal, Palace winger. I remember. Him. I turned, uh, looked for a seal of approval from Herlock, and he just went that dude for me. <laughs> And I thought, fucking yes, Terry just winked at me. I'm buzzing now. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. It's like proper characters, mate, you know. And um, like I say, your Brian O's, your Roberts. And um, even like players like Jimmy Carter, like later on, they was proper, proper Millwall people, you know, and do anything yeah, for yeah. you. He'd come back to finish his career, Jimmy Carter, didn't he, at Millwall? Yeah. Um, oh, dear. So, I'm, I'm still buzzing off the two wins here. So, over four games, we ain't... We um hang on over four games there we've only conceded one goal against Chelsea, yeah, two clean sheets against Arsenal, yeah, and obviously a clean sheet in a home game against Chelsea and then in the fifth round we were, we were, did we get too complacent we we play um Premier League as well at the time, little old Queens Park Rangers yeah but that's straight off this road that, that was a good QPR team and I think when we played them that's third or fourth in the league yeah they were like Les Ferdinand Trevor Sinclair Wilson they had good English play uh, England and Nationals. Uh, I think at the time they was in better form than Chelsea but again we should have won the game Andy Roberts hit the post we had a good couple of chances and we only lost to a penalty yeah. uh, in the 93rd minute which I don't, still to this day don't know what Damien Webber is doing he's jumped up he's like sort of brought his arm up as he's jumped to give him extra height missed the header and hit him on the arm and we didn't even have time to take kick off so it was yeah. a big kick in the nuts because we deserved we did deserve something out of the game and we would have got Man United in the next round which would have made it even more like um Unbelievable story. That's just like three London draws, three London derby draws in three rounds of the FA Cup. It's just, yeah, yeah, the old Bill would have an absolute meltdown in this day and age. You know if it happened. Where do we, how do we do? I can't even, that year to me just sticks out for the cup runs. I can't even really remember how we got on in the league or anything. The league, we finished about ninth, tenth. Yeah. And what we did, we had a real good league run as well through this period. And it was after the cup run. You know, sometimes it happens. You, put so much effort into this cup run and all these big games like the Saturday after that QPR game we lost 4-0 at Barnsley and um, just little things like that we just lost a little bit of we was inconsistent then lost the too many silly games when we should have easily easily made the playoffs easily we got to the quarter or semis of the Coca-Cola Cup that year as well we had a really good run in that so we was a good cup team that year but not too not consistent enough in the league yeah you mentioned him a minute ago Tony Witt had no boots on yeah. Uh, what was he? What was he like? He was so quick when he used to make a few fuck ups. I remember, but then he recovered just through sheer pace. Yeah, that's what. You, that's him. On, now did on the head. He get away with things through his unbelievable quick. Technically, weren't great. Uh, as long as he simplified his game, you know what I mean. Get it, give it simple, and um, head it. But just quick as wasn't he. And he was a good foil for um, Rhino. You know what I mean? Because Rhino weren't the quickest, but he's a great defender. So between the two of them, they built up quite a good relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So that season was the last, was your last season at the club? I, no, I started pre season uh, and then left in uh, August. So, what, how did that come about? Because obviously, me, will fan, I'm taking it from what you're telling me, and I, I know you anyway personally that you didn't want to, we wouldn't want to be leaving the club. 
No, what, um, what happened was it's a bit silly, really, that um, we come back pre-season and then uh, I've got an injury within the first week. And what I do is I, I train during the summer. My uncle had a boxing gym in, in Dulwich on a rope. And I was just doing skipping and I sort of done something to my Achilles but didn't report it. So I just carried on training. And within three days of back pre-season, I was out for four weeks. I missed the um, first three weeks. Went to Ireland, still wasn't really fit on the pre-season tour, played my first game. And when you're not fit and you're trying to compete at how you do, um, I got into a bit of a fight in the game and I think I headbutted an Irish centre forward and got sent off. So I ain't crowned my, crown myself in glory that pre-season. I come back injured and then got sent off in the Ireland game. So I right. didn't start the season. Uh, but then through the reserve games, played one or two, thought I was back to where I should be, but he's playing Mickey Bennett ahead of me. Um, and I always remember it is on a Saturday and there's an agent called Barry Silkman. I don't know if you've heard of him. No. Uh, he's an ex-player, but he's a big agent at the time. And he said, why are you playing? And I just, oh, I don't know, he's playing Mickey Ed and me. He goes, you happy here? I goes, it's my club, innit? But I just want to be playing. Um, so with that, on the Monday, Sheffield United were trying to sign Kevin Muscat. He didn't get international clearance. So Silky rung Harry and goes, how about Mark Beard at Mill? And a year before, I scored against Sheffield United and and when we played him at home, I won man a match playing in midfield, so he really liked me, Harry. And he said, well, speak to Mick McCarthy, see if you get him. They rung Mick and said, dear, would you sell Beardy? And uh, he rung the chairman and he said, well, they was thinking about bringing Gerald Lavin in for half a million. So he said, out of respect to Beardy, if, if you want to bring Gerald in, you have to get rid of Mark. So he said, OK, um, let's do it. So he rung me, Mick, and goes, we've accepted a bid from Sheffield United. Do you want to go talk? And I went, not really. And, he, and then he told me about the situation with um, Lavin coming in as well. So I'm thinking, you got Mickey, who's playing ahead of it in a minute. Lavin, uh, fuck it, I'll go speak to him. So I went up on a Tuesday. And I went up on a Tuesday. Didn't really know too much about Sheffield United. But was sort of blown away by the size of the club. It's just like, you can't believe how big it is and um, the history they had. They showed me everything. And um, Harry was a great man. And I agreed to sign that night. Didn't really have a lot of thinking time, 20 years old. If I would do it again, I'd probably say no. I'd fall from a place at Millwall. Um, and I know I would have got back into the team. I know I would have done. I know I was better than Lavin and Mickey Bennett. I actually felt pain then when you said Gerard Lavin half a million. It just reminded me. Yeah. And Tough, Watford, didn't he? Went from Watford for half a million, didn't we? Fucking half a million for a right back. That's like astronomical for us, isn't it? Yeah, he, had good, and all. yeah he had a good reputation, but I knew from... I played against a youth team year after year, and I knew... What I could offer, what I could do was better for me all than what he would have been or Mickey Bennett. Mm -hmm. So I was a little bit disappointed the fact that um, Mick uh, had sent it set to the bid, you know what I mean? So, um, and then probably if I'd give my advice to any other youngster again, really think over it a bit more. I, I, I said just too quick. Um, and then before you know it, signed a deal, come back home, and I've got to go back in training Thursday. And then like, I went to bed that night, I woke up and I thought, what have I done? But Oh, really? I've done it now and you just got to get on with it. But you're 20 years old, you don't know. I've probably tripled my money, but it weren't about the money. I didn't I didn't negotiate the deal. Whatever they offer me, same as a meal thing, I just accepted it. It's just what they offer me. A uh, three-year deal up in a great place. And I actually had three unbelievable years there and probably had one of the best spells of my year with Howard Kendall, with one of the best managers and some of the best players that have played in the Premier League and in England. So with like Ian Rush, Don Atchison, um, Dean Saunders... Ian uh, Rush played for Sheffield United. Yeah, when I was there, yeah. Gordon Cowans, yeah, Alan Kelly. Uh, we had um, Gareth Taylor, we had a great team, really good team. Just saying about, you know, you left, do you think you maybe been, been a bit pissed off at Mick McCarthy because you weren't getting in, you, you sort of, did you throw a little bit of a wobbly or what? Because no, I don't I know, you, come, you come through the ranks, Millwall fan, you never been, never obviously had to live away from home. Did you, you, did you make the decision quite, you said you made the decision quite easily, so... Just it was, fancy it, challenge. Yeah, no, I didn't fancy new. I don't even know what it is. I can't explain. It's just uh, I didn't want to leave. Uh, and just, just the, it probably the fact that I didn't feel wanted if he said that we've been set to the bid and we're bringing someone else in. I'm thinking, yeah, of course, of course. If you're bringing him in and you've got Mickey Bennett in, I thought Mickey Bennett was going to come in. But as I say, I didn't um, help myself pre season. I was like, I was like, but I know I would have got back and I would have got my fitness back and I'm probably fitter than anyone else at the club. You know what I mean? I used to run and run and run all day long. So I would have got that fitness back. But um, I don't know. At 20 years old, you're not you're, you're not clever enough at the time. You're not experienced enough at the time to realise what had actually happened. And 
the, the, the quickness of how it happened. You know what I mean? I, I'd only met my missus three months, uh, a month before as well. So I've gone up, said on the way back down, we stopped at uh, one of the services, sort of signed, and she just said, well, that's it then, isn't it? It's like, she, I'm not going to move out to Sheffield, but she actually did, and we're still together and married. So, uh, and we had our twins there. So things do happen for a reason, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. So what league were they in, Sheffield United? Were they, were they Prem or Champ? Uh, Champ. They just got relegated from the Prem. Did you get you did get promoted back with him though, didn't you? No, we had okay. f- playoffs three years in a row. Oh. Got to Wembley once, lost to Palace, and lost in the semis twice. Jesus, that's a shame, mate. It's a shame. Like, I don't even remember Mickey Bennett. I don't even remember him. But um, yeah. Gerard Lavin, I can I can definitely vouch for you. It's fucking difficult, it's, wasn't it? Mickey it's, come from Cheltenham. I don't remember him. A bit of a rap. Yeah. That shows how good he was. I can't fucking remember the geezer. But say so you went on to Sheffield United after that, uh, South End. You had a good career, mate. Had a, had a little bit of uh, topping up the town in Spain as well at one point. But um, we're going to get on to it. We don't usually delve into this sort of thing after Millwall because it's not that I don't want to hear it or the fans don't want to hear it, but it's just obviously a Millwall show. And this is obviously Millwall orientated because you've had a very good career. And how many years you've been in football now? Uh, since 16. So I'm 45 now, so nearly 30. Nearly 30 years. You are now. Well, tell us what your role is now. Uh, Brighton under 18s manager, and obviously through that you was um, responsible for the development of a one certain Jason Malumbi. Yeah, who's been Great brilliant kid. for us. What can you tell us about him? And that we don't already know. We know it. We know how hungry he is. For it. He's, he's got me all written all over him, mate, isn't he? Yeah, it's it, how it, how the move started in the first place. I would always said to Jason like, "You'll be a great, you'll be great for me all because the way he plays." And then I remember having a chat with him. It was probably two days before the cup quarter final last year. And I said to him, oh, I wait till you come to the den Saturday. I love it when you come there. And he come back on a Monday. I said, Beardy, I'd love to play for them. The fans are fucking mental. He said, I love it. I said, listen, I'll have a chat with them. So I did. I had a chat with Adam Barrett, rung him. Uh, and he said, remind me again pre-season. I said, then watch him in the uh, Toulon tournament. I said, he's class. He's me all over. And he said, what type of player is he? I said, demands the ball. Always wants the ball. Uh, gives it away he'll get it back if he gives it away again he'll keep keep demanding the ball he'll fly through brick walls for you he can score goals not what we've seen a lot this year um but he's got a bit of everything you know what i mean uh, yeah. and most important thing he's got a heart of a lion so i then spoke to him again in july um and june in pre-season and said like spoke to our guys and said like can we get it sorted it'd be great and so they went and had talks he was blown away by chopper and the club and said it's the best thing he's done uh, he loves it. He loves the players. He said he's never been in a change room like it. He loves the fans. He just he actually did a question and answer with my under 18s the other day, and he was brilliant because to see how he's matured as well. So he used to sulk a lot, Jason. If things didn't go his way, he throws toys at the pram. Um, and he said they one of the boys asked him a question, "What's the biggest thing you learned?" He said that if you sulk on a pitch, the boys will grab you by the throat and fucking make sure you don't do it again. And he's, <laughs> He talks about the team spirit. He's never been anywhere like it. And the captain, Cooper. Cooper is the captain. Uh, no, Hutchinson will be a captain. Hutchinson. Is our captain. Do you know what? We've been playing so long. I can't remember our captain is. Yeah, Hutchinson. Yeah. Cooper's a centre-half. Big centre-half. Plays next to Hutchinson, yeah. Yeah, he just said them to like, just run the change room. He said they're unbelievable. And they just do... They, there's no clicks. Everyone's together. And I think you can see that on the pitch. You can really see it now. You could just see that... Um, obviously, Chopper's built... It from a few years ago, getting the right characters in, and now with right Rowett style, um, it's just sight and time ahead. Yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. So, so basically, I'm just remembering back what you said. The FA Cup, where we was two new up, and fucking Dave Martin threw one in the nets. Obviously, Malumbi was there that day, not in the squad. Nothing. With Brian, no, just travel, just there. He was injured. He was injured. Um, he come back towards the end of that season, and then had an unbelievable tournament with um, Ireland in Toulon. And really got a lot of people interested in him. So Mill was it was good that Mill got him. Yeah, yeah, I think it, so. He's definitely going to go back to Brighton, unfortunately. But um, he's been brilliant for us, and the fans really like him. He's been very good, mate. So uh, cheers for that one. <laughs> he's got any other? He's got a good goal scorer. Send him our way. <laughs> <laughs> but being honest, mate, that's been um, that's been a brilliant trip down memory lane. I've I've really really enjoyed it, mate. Thanks for your time. It's been superb. No worries, mate. Top man. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Dan. Bye, mate.